Hey, Abundant Parents, it's Leah. Shannon Garrison Nagy was my guest on the Abundant Parent membership a year ago, last June. This workshop is now open to the public for the very first time. In this workshop, Shannon and I are going to teach you very real tool to help bring more self-care into your parenting lives so you can be the best parent that you can be, the parent that connects with your kids best. Why? Because it all starts with you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe. I do post a new video at least once a week, sometimes more, so hit the bell. That way you'll be notified when I post new videos. Hey, Abundant Parents, it's Leah. I have Shannon here with Embracing the Brilliance. And as you've heard, today we're gonna to be talking all about parent overwhelm, whether you are a working parent, whether at home or out of the home, or if you're a stay-at-home parent. There's gonna be a lot of really great tools in this workshop today, as well as talking a lot about self-love. So Shannon, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Shannon garrison Negi. I am a former corporate finance executive who decided I couldn't live that life anymore after I had my second daughter last year. Well, technically I was let go about a week before I had her. <laughs> but I already had been thinking in my head, how do I, how do I go back to this life when now I'm going to have a second baby? I think after I had my first daughter, I wanted to go back to work. I've always liked to work. It's just kind of been my thing. I always did the right thing. I got a degree. I got a good the job. Right thing. I did the right thing. <laughs> what, what they tell us we're supposed to do. So I like to tell people that, you know, I got a good job. I always progress in my career. I lived a great life. I travel. I do things. I have fun. I work to support my life. So now that I have children, that's kind of shifted a little bit. Mm -hmm. And two years ago, I started my entrepreneurial journey. I joined Rodan and Fields. And that was kind of a game changer for me. I originally did it because I wanted to make dog food money and I really didn't realize I was missing the people part of that situation I was at an unhappy place in my job thinking this can't be it like this can't be the rest of my life <laughs> commuting to New York City every single day and dealing with a boss who doesn't care about you or your future they just worried about what the company's gonna do so for the me bottom line, the company's bottom line. that really was kind of a game changer for me and it was the right time for me to jump into something else I quickly realized that okay there's a whole another world out there of things outside of corporate America that I can probably excel at. So that kind of changed my life. I fit, you know, fast forward, I was at a radio station, had my second daughter and really decided I couldn't, I just couldn't go back. I couldn't do that. I'm like, why am I going to do that? I'm doing this other business. And I've kind of morphed from there. The last six to eight months has really been a journey for me, a self-care journey, mm -hmm. taking care of myself, working on my mindset, which is something I hadn't really done. I think you're, we get so busy taking care of the kids, taking care of the house. You know, for those of us that did have nine to fives or do have nine to fives, you're, I literally was running 6 37 AM. I'm running to the train. I'm riding the train. I'm and then I'm also running a second business. <laughs> so add in all of that, it's very overwhelming sometimes. And you don't necessarily get to spend time with your kids. You you miss on that whole and especially that sex focused attention. Yeah. Like that that really focused. It's really with yeah, kids. get home, eat dinner, go to bed because I have other things to do. And that was my mindset. And so six months ago when I decided not to go back or eight months now at this point, um, at the end of last year, that for me really became the turning point. And I took a step back. I honestly hired my first business coach and it was more of a mindset thing. I really wanted to figure out what do I need to do to excel myself at whether it's network marketing and I, now I've morphed into doing business strategy. I didn't think I could do any of that stuff. I didn't think I was creative and that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And now I, I think back and I think, wow, why did I think that? Mm -hmm. Why did I not think I was capable of creating beautiful content and actually helping my children you know, improve on their mindset and teach them how to be creative and all of those things. So it's really been an, an incredible journey over the last six, eight months to, for me to go through all of that. And don't you find as a coach that the stuff that you're coaching people on, you're also still really working on yes, yourself. Yes, 150%. Yeah. It's crazy. I thought, how can I be, for, I didn't think that's why I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't think it was something I could ever do. I'm like, how can I do that when I'm still trying to figure all this stuff out? And I think that's kind of the key is you're only ever maybe one step ahead of the person that you're trying to help in anything. And I say that with my <laughs> daughter. She might be trying to draw something. And let's be clear. I'm I, I might be creative, but drawing might not be my strong suit. I can color like nobody's business. Can I business. just tell a little story? Yeah. Perfect example of this is I had some friends come over yesterday and help watch my kids while I did the workshop with my nonprofit. 
And my youngest daughter had drawn a picture that had like herself with a really like angry face with like the angry brows. She drew her sister with like the angry brows. And then she drew our little Boston Terrier. And he also had the angry <laughs> brows. And it basically said on the sign, it said family only. And they taped up on their door. And so basically they were saying that these these they people didn't. that were coming over to help watch them and their children were not welcome in their bedroom where their toys were. And so I took a picture of it and I sent it to my friend and I was like, we are so abundant over here. Just <laughs> abundant. Anyway, so we are always still working on the same thing. We, we yeah. my, mine are three and a half and one, and the three and a half year old just tries to beat up the one year old all the time. And she's like, she can't come in my room. And it's the angry face. She does the angry face really yeah. well. They're abundant. Part of that, it. They're very abundant. <laughs> Part of that has changed. We just moved across country from New York. So we're in Colorado now. That's why we're here in person, which is so awesome. And we're loving it. It's just, it's definitely hard for a three and a half year old to go through that. So that's <laughs> oh, talking about, about talking about over year old. <laughs> talking about overwhelm is uh, I have been more overwhelmed in the last month than I have in a long time, and I think mm -hmm. this has been the perfect time to talk about these things because it's just it's crazy. I always had a nanny before because I always had a nine to five, so mm -hmm. I always had help, and you don't even realize this is my first time really just being alone with them for the last month, and <laughs> it's been a little crazy, a little intense. It's, it's been a really intense. Yeah, three and a half year old going through change is. Oof. It's only so many things you can give her. <laughs> only so many movies she can watch, too. Oops. I, should, I shouldn't even give my daughter movies, but I do sometimes. Screen free when it works. Right? Yes. Sometimes when. It, sometimes so, you just got to do whatever fun. works. Mama needs the break. <laughs> All right. So tell us, you have three tips for us. Yep. About how we can stay sane as a parent when we are home all day with our kids. So tell us a little bit about those tips. So yes, there are actually things that I use all the time now. And that's why I felt so inclined to share this. And it's, it, it's kind of the thing that I've been working on right now with a lot of people, not even just parents, but anybody who's in business and running a household and doing all those things. I think the first one is really keeping myself organized. Um, yeah, I, when the laundry gets thrown on the floor, <laughs> the triggers of my overwhelm are messiness everywhere. I, I, I really, I'm like that accountant comes into play and I'm, if my desk is a mess, there's stuff on the floor. I, I the kitchen's a mess. I, I just, I start twitching. I have that same thing. It's like, I don't know if it's OCD, but there's definitely, I have a little mantra that I say to myself, or an, I guess it's an affirmation where I like, I'll look at the mess and I'll say, does this really matter? Because otherwise I'm like a little more. tea kettle and I just start <laughs> steaming. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. No, that's totally me. I just, I, it's, it's, I used to be that person that used to have to clean my desk at the end of the night too, even though it'd be like a train wreck. I just had to sort everything out at work because I just, it makes me more calm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if the kitchen's clean and I can go into my office and maybe do, even if it's 15 minutes of work, it's a big deal. So I think for me, what I've started doing and what I've put into play in life and in business is time blocking. I re and listen, your schedule is going to change every single week. So I try to sit down on a Sunday night or a Monday morning, probably Monday morning more so because Sunday tends to get crazy with family and really say, okay, what do I want to accomplish this week? And that's also part of it is what are your specific goals and intentions that you want to accomplish? Maybe it's taking the kids to the park for three different times this week, but whatever it is, pick something, pick stuff that's attainable, pick stuff that you're actually going to do. And I like to time block. So I start with family time. I start with, okay that's the most important for me. I, and then I put in me time, um, which is some other stuff we'll talk about, but it's, you know, what do I want to get done for myself this week? And then it's just really anything else. Like I'm going to have this much time to work or, you know, maybe I know that grandpa's going to take my daughter once she gets into school. Honestly, for me, it probably gets easier. And I know a lot of you who are on summer break right now, once the kids go back to school, it gets easier to stagger your time because you know for sure when they're going to be in a certain place. So that for me, it's really, okay, I'm going to have this much time for work. I'm going to have this much time for family and I'm going to take the kids to do whatever I'm going to do when I'm going to do it. And so do you find that really takes like the edge off of things where you don't feel like you're really cramming to get dinner done and cramming to get all these little things done because you know, you've blocked out the time for them? Yeah. And I, and I also, also tend to just give myself like it's not everything's going to go the way you planned it and that's been a little hard for me now that I've had kids I think I was always that very a little probably OCD about okay I said I was going to do this I got to do it and then it you beat yourself up when you don't get it done so mm -hmm. I've tried to remove that and just really go with the flow stuff's going to shift mm -hmm. stuff's going to change you're not always going to be able to get 
all of what you wanted to get done. Going with that is besides from setting specific goals, specific intentions that you want to get done this week, I like to call them intentions. I've kind of removed goals because I don't ever want it to be something I don't hit anymore. So you I just have kind of a negative connotation. I, I've removed goal. I use intention now because my yeah. intentions are always for the most part good. I try to make them doable. Yeah. I don't want, I'm tired of setting, I would write down goals every single month and then they would be so did you ridiculous. Kind of feel like you were setting yourself up I was up setting myself up for failure. So I try not to do that. And that's, you know, for those of us, especially if you're running a business, that's, that's a big one. You don't want yeah. to not meet your goals at the end of the month. So, yeah. or the end of the week or whatever time frame you've set for yourself. Along with that is I also do a lot more meal planning. I actually love to cook. It's kind of, I, before I had kids cooking for me, I would come home and have to cook dinner. It just like zen me totally out glass of wine some dinner even if I only made popcorn for dinner which I've been known to do many times uh that zens me out so especially now that we're here and I've really been trying to plan out what are we going to eat what what do, what if I eat whether I've got something in the freezer or we're going to hit the store on a Monday or we're going to run to Costco whatever it is really trying to say okay tonight we're going to make this and then tomorrow and then that way we have backups for lunch and just really being more mindful about what we're eating. I'm also a little bit on the health journey these last few weeks and really just trying to take better care of the whole family. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like instead of eating chicken nuggets every day, <laughs> maybe we can throw some vegetables. If we can throw some vegetables in there. Not gonna lie, I ate Chick-fil-A yesterday. I was like, and I didn't feel guilty at all. Good. French fries and some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I'm like, not gonna feel guilty because like I've been putting myself in yoga, I've been doing mm. the things that make me feel better, and then feeding my family mm. has been really helpful. So, what like, I know for me, meal planning, it, there was something about getting home at the end of the day, or if I was home all day with my kids and it getting to be mealtime and they were saying they were hungry, and then having to rack my brain to open oh. the freezer, open the fridge, figure out what I was going to make. There was something that just totally amplified the stress oh, it's of making so, the meal by not having it planned in advance. I, the, the thing is, in, with, especially with little littles, by six o'clock, they're like, we're hungry, we're hungry, we're, we're hungry. Toast. And if I haven't already figured out what we're feeding them and it's not ready to go, mm -hmm. oh, forget it. Yeah. All, all hell's going to break loose yeah. at our house. They get hangry. So, yeah. My, yeah, my oldest is very hangry. She's like the Snickers commercial. It's really bad. So you always know, and she doesn't realize she's hungry. She just knows that she feels grumpy. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, we've been meal planning at our house. It's actually going really well. Just having a plan. I bought an Instapot. Oh, I hear good things about I, I, I finally broke down and did it. Yeah. My sister had said, you got to do it. And I'll tell you what, being able to be, okay, I mean, whether I'm going to make lentils or I'm, we've been making Indian food, mm -hmm. my husband's Indian. So we've been making Indian food and just having the food ready to go and having it ready. Like last night I had dinner ready and my daughter walked in at six from going to her arts and crafts and she's like, I'm hungry. And I'm like, fantastic. Dinner's on the table. Go. <laughs> yes. So well, and on a side note, I'm really into nutrition and stuff. And so one of the things I really love is making bone broth Ooh, and I because you can idea. like cook your rice with it. You can mix it into smoothies if you're using like a neutral, like a chicken broth and you don't season it at all. It's actually super neutral. So you can I need to smoothies. work on that. And I, so I, I haven't done enough of bone are, broth. And I hear a lot of people using Instapots to make it. Oh, so that's good. Okay. Know. I'm going to have to check that Let's out. Good tips. I learn stuff <laughs> every day too. It's all about learning. And then the last part is really for me, because I'm running a business, several businesses, actually, I, I think and for those of you, even if you don't, even if you're not running a business, but having a space that's yours mm -hmm. in the house can be a game changer, whether you're going to sit down and write some bills out or go online and pay them, or even to sit and plan your week. I have a dedicated office space and it's really, it's such a, it's really my happy place. It's filled with crystals and all that woo-woo stuff that I'm now into that a year ago I would have been like, what? I can so totally I get love it. the crystals. Right? I, I love my crystals now. Um, you know, my books, it has all those things and it's just me and I don't necessarily have to let anyone in there if I don't want to. So I think that's a big, that's a big part of it too. Even if you, even if you just have a little corner where, you know, you can sit and chill out and read a book, that's, that's also a huge part. Just and having, I know for me, for me, it's just, I just have a desk. That's really the only space I have as a workspace is just a desk. But what I find is I actually don't work at my desk, but it's this place that I know that if I put a bill down, it's always going to be there. And I love knowing that it's like my designated space. Yeah. It's, if it's messy right there. It's because I've made the mess there. And so I can only hold myself responsible. Um, yeah. my kids know that it's off limits because that's where I do all of my important work and it, not technically doing my work there. I'm actually like on my computer at my chair or at my kitchen table and kind of floating around. But knowing that I have that space for, where I can always find the stuff I'm working on has become um, really psychologically peaceful yes. for me. It's, and not it's, having it's it spread the, out all over the place. It's the mindset so, yeah. of just having a space where you can put your mm -hmm. stuff and it's where it's yours and mm -hmm. it's, you know, little hands still touch everything, but you know. 
It's I right. can't find my scissors still. <laughs> They've been missing for a couple months. <laughs> I lose things all the time still. Actually, my stuff's still in boxes, so I'm waiting for the shelves to get here so I can actually put together my office. And, and then maybe I'll with, share a photo. And what do they do with all the scotch tape? What oh, do they do with it? Does, what? I, why does every child love scotch tape? I don't see the scotch tape products, like the projects they're working on, but yet all of my scotch tape is on. Yeah. I had my little one took an entire roll of scotch tape one day and she had it everywhere. I don't, mm -hmm. I, and then she looked at me like, can what you help me? It? Can you help me? Yeah. What do they do with this? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Moving on. So what's next? Um, the next tip. We're also, the next tip is all about <laughs> taking care of yourself. So tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. So taking care of yourself, I think for me has been the biggest game changer in the last six to eight months. And it's something I realized that I wasn't doing enough of. And you don't even realize it when you're stuck in that Maybe you're driving a carpool, you're driving to soccer, or you're running errands, you're doing this, I got to go grocery shopping. And then add in, if you work on top of that, you know, I was just going to and from work, barely getting dinner on the, I was literally picking up dinner every night in Grand Central at the market. If you're ever in New York, Grand Central Market's amazing. Um, I would, but thank God for, you know, nicely prepared sort of healthy food, right? They had a lot of vegetables. And literally that's what we would do. We would just feed the kids, get them in bed. <laughs> I would go work my other business. I, it was like this vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And I think taking a step back and actually working on myself and working on how do I need to be as a person and then as a parent and then in business, mm -hmm. right, was a huge game changer. And I have started basically every week. I have non-negotiable activities that I do every That's single great. that I do every single week. Mm -hmm. And it's usually three to five things, usually five. And it, things as little as buying yourself flowers, um, drinking a glass of champagne, but actually planning it and putting it on your calendar and drinking and saying, the whole glass I'm actually drinking it <laughs> don't set it down i'm notorious for that and i come back and i won't drink champagne if it's warm so i would literally do that all the time set yeah. my glass down and yeah. then it's warm and i have to pour it out and, you know we know all about that with the cold coffee right oh yeah. i'm the worst i drink <laughs> half a cup of coffee and forget about it uh but i was like that and i used to be like that in my old corporate job too i literally would buy the coffee and it was i would drink it all day People thought I was insane. But you got um, really good gut health from all of the bacteria that was probably going on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's really, and it's it's just, and, you know, that goes with meal planning, being mindful of what, you're, what I'm putting in my body. You know, I'm going to yoga more. I am really just working on taking care of myself. And it's really made my mindset just that much better. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little bit of meditation here and there. Mm -hmm. Those things that make me happy. And I think that's the most important thing. It doesn't matter what it is. It just needs to be something for you something that's only for you. It's not, you're going to do something because your husband wants you to do it or, or your significant other or your mom or your brother or whatever. Right. It needs to be something for you and something that you'll actually do. So that is probably, it's one of my favorite things to talk about, I think right now, because it's been such a game changer for me over the last six to eight months. I mean, literally for me, it's running around with my Palo Santo sometimes and like cleansing my crystals and actually getting 10 minutes to So if you don't out. know, Palo Santo, is, so when you burn sage, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with, but um, it's usually if you're at Native American events or at you're at the hippy dippy stores, it has that kind of smoky feeling. They've been burning sage. And what sage does is it clears all the negative energy out of your space. And then what Palo Santo does is it's this little hunk of, it looks like wood, but it's actually from the coconut shell, right? Has a little no, bit is of, that, no, I think it's actually wood. Is it, it has a, like a little bit of a coconut. Holy, it's the holy wood. Okay. It has a little bit of a coconut scent I, to I, it. I love it. I, I, and so what that does, it actually brings all the positive energy back in. So if you're burning sage and that's something like you like to do, definitely add the Palo Santo. It's I, I really tend awesome. to, I don't, I tend to not like the smell of sage. I think I'm it's might, pretty smoky. It, it's, sage gets yeah. really intense. And I did it one time and almost burned down the house. My husband was like, what, what the heck are you don't doing? Don't use that method. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't get so much in the house and forget to open all the windows. Yep. That wasn't a good idea. And it literally made me, it literally made me nauseous. Yeah. So I tend to err on the side of using my Palo Santo instead of sage, mm -hmm. which you can do, you can do either or you don't necessarily yeah. have to use them both together, but that's just a little woo woo tip. That and I, I open all my windows when I do it too. So there's right. And it clears the, well, and that's also part of you. You're basically open all the windows mm -hmm. and you're pushing out all the negative energy so that's yeah. good that's yeah but I love it I have I've now become the crystal person and yeah people and then just rewinding a little bit with like adding those self-care things I think if you're already watching this and in your mind saying oh yeah like you're already making excuses you're saying I'm too busy to go to yoga I'm too busy to do this I don't have the time to do that like when am I going to find a big chunk of time to do yada 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 then just remember you don't have to do all of these things at right. once right yeah you absolutely super small like it's, the flowers it's literally you're at the grocery store buy flowers yeah that's that's kind of how I started mm -hmm. and it was literally 
making sure I poured mm-hmm. myself that, whether it's glass of wine, glass of champagne, whatever it is. Yeah. I tend to like champagne. That's why I always go for it. But sorry, I'm just totally looking at the window. <laughs> I it, just it looks like a tornado. It does. It looks like a tornado. I'm like, oh my God, what's happening outside? Um, Brace yourself. <laughs> but, Welcome to Colorado. Yeah, I think it's more the mindset and it's whatever it is for you that makes you happy. Maybe it's taking an hour to go get your hair done and asking, you know, that kind of goes with also taking care of yourself is the, my next piece of that is asking for help. I'm here today because my, my dad is helping me and that's been the fun part about being in Colorado is I have family here now. Asking for help when you need it. It's okay. I think we all, especially as women and moms, we, we want to do everything and I'm that person. I've always been that person. Mm-hmm. I tend to want to do everything myself and I really struggle to ask for help and we always feel that guilt factor like oh I shouldn't need to ask for help yeah. and it's just it should be something shameful and it shouldn't it really needs you it's okay to ask for help none of us were supposed to be on this journey alone no, if you look um, at older cultures collaboration yeah. I feel like especially with kids involved is key collaboration in our business mm-hmm. in being out there to help each other elevating everyone is huge for me. And that's actually also really helping me on the business side of things is just being out there and saying, you know what, I want to share value and I want you to come share value with my group and, and all of those things. You know, if you need help, you need your husband, take them so I can go get my hair done for an hour do it. Ask him. He, I'm sure he will be grateful. <laughs> You'll be a happier person yeah. or vice versa. Maybe he needs to go do something. I'm working on this with my husband as well. Like, what do you need? Do you need to take an hour and go have a drink at a bar, whatever it is, whatever that thing is mm-hmm. that you need to do, just ask for help. I promise they're not going to, they're not going to tell you no. And I actually <laughs> have a few stay at home dads that are part of this group as well. And sometimes I think they become pretty isolated as a group yeah. because there's a lot of communities and stuff geared towards moms and a lot of moms in the school communities that reach out and support one another, but then they're more hesitant to support the stay at home dad. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, I've seen that. A so definitely bit. dads, even more important. I would say if you're a stay at home dad, almost even more important that you reach out and you ask for help because I feel like your communities are even smaller. smaller. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. And then my last tip on taking care of yourself is literally give yourself grace. Mm-hmm. We, you know, if you're just a stay at home parent or maybe you're looking to start a bit, do something just on the side. Meaning if you're also trying to not also trying to run a business or start a business or whatever, I think that's really important. You still at the end of the day, you've accomplished a lot. You're raising a little human. We're all yeah. raising little humans uh, in this group. And that's an amazing accomplishment, right? And just surviving the day, nobody died, everybody's still alive, nobody's hurt, everything's still going. They they're fed, they're happy. Mm-hmm. I, that is a huge accomplishment. And I think I used to beat myself up about everything, about not feeding my kids properly, mm-hmm. about you know, just whatever it is. Maybe I didn't finish what I said I was going to finish in a day. And I really had to learn to give myself grace. Mm -hmm. You, you are, you are building, you know, the future, uh, whether it's, you know, in kid form and business form, both, whatever that is, you're building the foundation for the next generation. And that's a huge accomplishment in and of itself. So we need to be, do you feel like part of that giving yourself grace is also saying you've got all of these things on your to-do list today? but you promised yourself you're going to do something for yourself this week and allowing yourself to not feel guilty when you do that self-care. 150%. Um, Not letting myself feel guilty for most things anymore is on my agenda every single day because I used to put myself through a lot of that. It's it's not worth it. It's just, there's no reason for that. You have to celebrate everything. And that really leads us into my last tip is really about celebrating. I don't think we spend enough time celebrating ourselves. We spend a lot of time in guilt. We spend a lot of time in beating ourselves up, comparing Comparison, yeah. comparisonitis is rampant. Yeah, like <laughs> we feel like we're not giving ourselves. We didn't finish this. We didn't finish that. Oh, I didn't make that dinner I wanted to make. Oh, I didn't take my kids to. I didn't take my kids outside today. Even yeah. you know all of those things. And it's give yourself some grace. Mm-hmm. You're doing a great job. Your kids are alive. <laughs> right? They're going to grow up to be great humans. We're all right. doing a great job. And then, so that really, for me, then it's like, you should celebrate that. We don't spend enough time celebrating. That was something I had to learn. You know, there wasn't. And most of the people that I knew in corporate America don't celebrate things often enough. Yeah. We didn't celebrate anything small. It only had to be this huge thing. Oh, you had this huge, like, win or, you know, oh, we're going to celebrate that you had a baby. Well, what about all the other things? Even just getting dinner on the table at the end of the night. Literally for me, 
that has become a huge thing. And I celebrate and I have on my calendar every single night at 10 o'clock, which is usually while I try to get in bed by 10 o'clock. It pops up in my reminder and it says celebration list. And it was something I, when I worked with the coach a few months ago, she was like, I knew I want you to do a celebration list. Mm -hmm. And that really, for me, was like, oh yeah, you're right. She goes, because I know you're going to bed and I know you're beating yourself up every single night. Mm -hmm. And that kind of changed the game for me. And when I work with, you know, my clients, that's, you need to celebrate every single thing. Mm -hmm. Celebrate that you got your kids dressed and everybody ate breakfast before 8 a.m. and you went to the library. That you didn't get poop on your hands yeah. today. <laughs> That's kind of a big one. I Nobody, uh, yeah, there were no diaper Nobody explosions. else got poop on their Nobody hands. Nobody else got poop on their hands. <laughs> yeah, you, maybe you served your kid. You know, the kids ate vegetables. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's really just about celebrating all the little things because this journey, you're only on this journey once. Let's enjoy it. That's really become my mantra. Let's enjoy this. Let's celebrate. Yeah. And celebrate however that means for you, whatever it is, even if it's just doing a little happy dance by yourself for two minutes. That's been a game changer. And, and that's all mindset. And that kind of reminds me of what we were actually talking about before we went live, which is Brene Brown's work and, and how she is an advocate that everybody is doing the best that they can, given yep. that the tools that they have in hand. And so today, in this moment, with what you know, you are absolutely doing the best that you can. Even if you've completely lost your business with your kids and you screamed at them, like that was the best that you could do today and that's okay. But you're going to build on that and you're constantly going to be learning. And the parent that's in you right now that is eager to keep learning and be in that expansive mindset, that you're going to continue to learn and be a better parent day by day, minute right. by minute. But just having, having that celebrating like the parent that you were today. Yep. And, and celebrating whatever you accomplished yep. today too, right? parenting, whatever it is, celebrate it, give yourself grace, you know, and we work towards, it's not necessarily working on being better. It's just working on, you know, being maybe more present. Yeah. You may, being a more present parent and that will help with your overwhelm as well. Yeah. Because that's, that's one of the things I and just, your kids are calmer when you're more present. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. The more angry, you know, my husband and I talk about that a lot. He, you know, he tends to have a little bit less patience than I do. And, but I've had to work on my patience. Yeah. That's, that's not something that came easy with me. I was probably the most impatient person on the planet and having kids has brought a whole different level of patience into the picture, but that helps me deal with the overwhelm mm -hmm. when the clothes are everywhere, the dishes are everywhere. The ornaments aren't in the right place on the Christmas tree. Oh yeah. That happens a lot. Some stuff gets thrown on the ground. Little Whatever little causes me to go into that that old that old Shannon that says, yeah. "Oh God, everything's out of place, and I'm gonna freak out right now." I just bring it back to, "Okay, this is not it's not the worst thing that's happened today or really? ever." So it's also something I use with my kids a lot. Yeah. Is when they're nervous, I'm like, "What's the worst that can happen?" And it's yeah. Like, What's today your worst day? Probably not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, these have all been amazing. I feel like we have a lot of really great take home tips and tools that we can apply to our life. But you are also offering something to the group, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would love to have some of you. I also am building my community, Embracing the Brilliance. Feel free to come over and join me. And we're, I also have a freebie to offer and it's really just a consolidation um, of tips and tricks and for staying focused on moving your life and your business forward. So there will be some stuff for parents and some stuff for people that have that are in business. So if you come and sign up for my email list and we will leave the link for you guys, you will get a beautiful gift. I've got some more stuff coming down the pipe, but I'd love for you to stay connected. I love this community. It's so much fun and I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you. I've appreciated you being in the group. If any of you are, have any other questions, I do a lot of free calls and things like that. And I'd love to help come find me on Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. either way. And, and don't forget to ask questions in the group too, because chances yeah. are, if you are feeling confused and have questions about something, it's going to benefit somebody else. Yes. Also. I've absolutely found that. I know a lot. Yeah. Sometimes people are afraid to ask questions and I'm like, no, I, I guarantee you if you're thinking about it, there's probably 1500 other yeah. people that are thinking the same thing. Okay. So tell us what you're website is? Oh, it, it's shannongarrisonneggie.com. Uh, and you can also find that if you find me on Facebook, you're going to, it's literally linked on my Facebook page. So please feel free to add me as a friend if you'd and like to, or jump into our group as well, because it's much, like I said, we talk about business, but there's also a lot of moms in that group and a lot of people just dealing with life. And, and I know just within this community, there's a lot of moms that are doing the, the, the mom thing now. And then some of the stay at home dads that are actually still working part time while they're, they're, while their partners are home with their kids. But I know that a lot of you are, are already thinking future plans for when your get, kids get older. So it could be a great group. Yeah. And the group is the Facebook group is embracing, embracing the brilliance, embracing the brilliance. So thank you so much. 
Remember, all of these workshops are monthly. They are at theabundantparent.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at The Abundant Parent. And we also did another little mini video about self-love. So be sure to take a look at that when I get that posted. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know your time can be limited and valuable. Shannon was a guest on the Abundant Parent membership. I host a new expert in their field every single month, bringing tips and tools for parents to help them connect with their kids best, also to help them heal their past. To have access to all of the workshops, go to theabundantparent.com and you want to click on the tab that says membership. Thank you so much, and I'm wishing you a day full of light, love, and abundance. <laughs> Bye.